Mm -hmm. Kia and welcome to uh, another session with me with uh, Hafsa, with your host Hafsa Ahmed, and this is your video podcast of Influences at LU, brought to you by Lincoln University's Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce. This is where I ask experts the challenges facing today's world, and we try to find solutions. Today, our topic is um, with Annie, who is the director of the Social Business Unis, uh, Center of Social Business at Lincoln University. She was appointed as the director of Unis Social Business Center of Social Business in 2000, uh, very recently, in 2019. And what she uh, a brief background about Annie's um, studies. Annie has completed her PhD from Lincoln University in Environmental Management in 2008, and she holds a master's degree in Environment and Development from Cambridge University in the UK. Um, and Annie has been uh, over the past five years been exploring social business to identify opportunities and challenges it faces through teaching in through teaching the course International Rural and Deve Rural Development. Welcome, Annie. Hey, Hafsa. Welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So the first question, Annie, would be a, a continuation of what we spoke with Chris Gann last week. Um, you know, he spoke briefly about the UNIS Center for Social Business. But what I would like more uh, from you is what is so different about social enterprises? Could you give us more details? All right. Yes. Um, let me start with a simple definition of social enterprise. It's a, the use of innovative business models, practices, and tools to create and trade products and services in the marketplace and reinvest profits. This is the key difference to conventional business to advance um, social or environmental purposes rather than to distribute the profit to shareholders or owners of the business. The return of investment is not necessarily in dollar, uh, dollars term, but on the social and environmental impact to the wider society. Now, although it may sound new to many people, the history of social enterprises goes back to the industrial revolution under different names. In the early uh, 1980s, uh, an international organization called Ashoka Foundation, which is based in the United States, uh, founded to, uh, was founded to promote um, SE by affiliating individual social entrepreneurs in the organization, mainstreaming the concept through teaching it in business schools, in main universities um, in the US and worldwide, educating institutions and mentoring social entrepreneurs and since then, it has increasingly gained relevance as a, as a field of studies um, and in business practice, especially in addressing underserved needs of communities. So uh, social enterprise have become a significant part of many advanced and developing economies across the world. For example, the UK as a leader uh, in this sector uh, has an estimated 68,000 social enterprises contributing 24 billion pounds annually to the economy. Australia, our neighbor, estimated, has estimated 20,000 ventures with government and social finance investing $40 um, million dollars annually. In New Zealand, according to Akina Foundation, um, the number of SE is around 300,000 and so far contributing 1 billion um, annually to the economy and absorbing around 10% of the country's workshop, work, workforce. So it's, it's, it's one in 10 people uh, involved in one way or another with, with SE, not, not probably not, not knowing um, the, uh, the, the technical uh, term of it. So um, investment in, in SE through strengthening uh, the social capital can 
start what economists call a virtuous cycle of social and economic development. Let me go a little bit more um, in this, if, if that's okay. Um, yeah, there's strong evidence that um, this uh, sector is recognized by um, uh, main international development uh, organization, uh, such as the um, OECD and the World Bank. This um, organization affirmed the importance of SE uh, at global and local level. For example, its direct economic values include employment creation and its multiplier effect on the economy. Uh, specifically, the provision of uh, job training to segments of society, such as those with disabilities, at-risk youth, gender-discriminated women who are excluded from conventional enterprises. Secondly, the entrepreneur's innovative products and services are addressing social uh, issues that are generally underserved, like healthcare, homelessness, social exclusion, access to affordable um, energy. And through these um, uh, types of activities, SE strengthens the social capital that is critical in many um, aspects uh, of, of uh, economies uh, to address poverty um, alleviation. But it's not just in poverty alleviation because it's, 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 it's practice in, in, uh, in other sectors as well, which I will give examples later. So in this process, social entrepreneurship and enterprises promote a more equitable society. So that's wow. the, uh, what it is and what it does and how it wow. contributes to society. Yeah. So think, it's a positive uh, force of change agent who bring forth leading its innovation, creative energy to fill yeah. the un unmet needs of society. Sure, um, as it is not a cure for all, but it's, uh, it has that important uh, role to fill gaps. In addressing issues that commercial enterprises are not addressing or where government capacity and political will are lacking. I, I think that was really good, uh, Annie, for uh, highlighting to us what the uh, social enterprise se sector does. And it was really good to know that, uh, you know, that social enterprises comprise such a big portion of New Zealand's economy, because I never knew that um, social enterprises could be such a big sector in New of New Zealand. And, uh, you know, knowing that one out of 10 are employed by social enterprises is again, a new, uh, new news for me. So, uh, and, and this is great because um for, and so what i would like you now to is to share a few examples of how SEs have changed circumstances and provided opportunities all right well i will start with the grameen bank um uh, with its innovative microfinance mechanism that provides access for poor women to credit to start their businesses um and whom conventional bank, banks would not give a loan to it was developed by Professor Mohammed Yunus in the mid 90s. And this is one of the many examples of how social enterprises demonstrate this guy for social and economic benefit to society. Another example, um, I love Jamie Oliver with his cooking uh, uh, programs. And um, he spearheaded the school lunches um, in, in the UK in the mid 20s, training young people, uh, youth at risk to to cook and to serve nutritious lunches in uh, school. Very well supported uh, by the government. Uh, Jamie worked very hard to get that very inspiring process where, where he did this. And um, there are myriads of examples around the world. People know Matt Damon from the Born Supremacy, uh, that series um, with the water project in Africa. George Clooney with the coffee uh, supply chains um, and fair, fair trade, uh, just encouraging um, smallholders to uh, uh, have a greater value of what they produce. But um, just uh, back in our be uh, in, on our backyard in New Zealand, um, where SE is relatively young, as I mentioned earlier, there are around 3,000 um, uh, SE or, um, addressing social issues of youth at risk, of refugee training, 
provision of jobs and training for people with disabilities, reintegration of former prisoners so that they uh, become uh, productive and, and um, maintain that dignity. There are SEs addressing child poverty um, and lunches at school, uh, similar to Jamie Oliver program, and others are addressing issues of ethical clothing and fashion, uh, reducing digital divide. It's, it's amazing to see the, this creative um, uh, sector. Several uh, SEs around the country are upcycling surplus furniture from corporation, diverting thousands of tons of waste from landfills. That's the environmental um, uh, purposes of, of SE that uh, often uh, reads through engaging um, uh, uh, people in employment in such activities like that. Several organizations are working, working for environmental purposes, um, like Trees for Canterbury, for example, are not just doing conservation education. They have nurseries, they give people seedlings to uh, bring native plants into their backyard. And through doing community activities, they also provide social connection for, for people. There's multiple social, economic, and environmental uh, purposes that they, they, they're doing. These examples are often addressing these uh, issues, the key pillars of sustainability at once, but they have uh, many, many challenges that, uh, that I will be happy to talk to if we have time for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Annie. I think you touched my heart with Jamie Oliver there because, you know, we all love him for his cooking and <laughs> obviously the connections to Hollywood that you've pointed out with Matt Damon and George Clooney. It, it definitely highlights that social enterprise is not something sitting in the corner, you know, where some people are just doing some random things. It has its own significance. And like you mentioned, what economists call it as the virtuous cycle, they are really a big contributor to our society. So we definitely need more of these social enterprises. So just because you mentioned about the barriers and challenges, what I'd really want to know what are the biggest challenges or barriers for social enterprises and how they can be addressed. Thank you. Um, so uh, internationally, there are two categories of challenges. We, uh, experts call them financial and non-financial, and there are, these are interrelated. Um, uh, but I just want to focus in New Zealand. Uh, the overarching challenge is the legal structure. Unlike in the UK, Canada, the US or Australia, the current legal structure here, represented by the, the Company Act, recognizes only two categories of organization companies and charity. These are the two ends of, of spectrums. Uh, social enterprises in, different, um, in several forms uh, falls along this continuum, but there are no legal um, uh, framework that enable SE to operate uh, because they are not purely companies with, uh, with the profit orientation, uh, but they are not charity. Yes, they, 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 they operate in a charitable manner because that's their social, their social uh, mission. But the, uh, the, the problem is that um, the current um, legal structure create the uncomfortable existence of SE as they do not um, uh, cater this uh, sort of the third sector, the middle uh, uh, sector, uh, uh, private and um, public uh, uh, sector. So uh, because of this, um, as if ever SE um, operate uh, business, um, uh, operate uh, business activities, they don't get tax advantages like charities do. They, uh, but it's very difficult to attract private investors because of the lower or no return investment in dollars because the investment, the return of investment is expressed in, in the social and environmental impact. On the other hand, when an SE operates under a charity, it requires complicated, um, time-consuming reporting 
and other types of red tapes that charity has to fulfill under the current act. And people are suspicious of charity that sells products and services because they're supposed to be charity. So the, this related to the second challenge, the, the access to, uh, to finance, the, the investing uh, part. So uh, for example, raising capital uh, for starting a, 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 a business for conventional business is, is a number six challenge, okay? But for SE, it's the top first challenge that needs to address because it's it's an awkward situation accessing that. So you know, you 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 can't rely on philanthropic donation all the time. You have to generate uh, income, but to generate activities, you need investment, uh, finance, and uh, investment. I'm sure Chris can um, have talked about 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 this, but uh, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, raising capital, engage in, engaging in innovation um, is what they do. And ultimately, a social enterprise may register um, you know, uh, 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 their activities at each end of the business continuum. But as I said, it's an awkward and multiplying, multiplying the job and diverting from focus, focusing on, on being innovative and addressing um, uh, these this, uh, issues, uh, the legal structures uh, issue. I'm aware that the Akina Foundation, which is um, an organization that was formed by the government to facilitate this, um, uh, this thing in, uh, since 2017, has been working with government to solve um, issues, not necessarily to create a new, totally new um, uh, policy, but to accommodate this this need, and it's it's heartening for me to hear uh, Louis Aitken, the, the CEO of Akina, who said that as it is happening in a, in a New Zealand, despite hurdles caused by the limiting legal structure. And um, this is a challenge, but it is also an opportunity to um, uh, to give evidence um, because. Uh, uh, SE involves many stakeholders, the public, the private inspector, uh, investors, and, and institution government. It can't be left alone to, for market to deal with it, right? And um, so engaged, engaging uh, stakeholders is another challenge, raising public awareness of SE and its role in in society, especially in attracting um, uh, investment. But also another thing that, that, that is critical for any business is to connect to market. Awareness of what this, this uh, uh, SE uh, do and, and the, the, the product and services the market. Being part of that, that market is a way of, of, of supporting um, uh, uh, SE. And again, the lack of awareness of return of investment <clears throat> has uh, undervalued um, SE because uh, it's still generally, you know, investment is generally still measured in terms of percentage of interest uh, or dividend. And uh, that's a, it's, a, a, it's not, it's not um, working for, uh, for social purpose because the impact is often long-term and um, uh, wider. Uh, we, can, we can calculate the economic uh, of, of that, but it's not immediate to investors. So uh, many investors, ethical investors are interested in ethical investment, but there is no, no body, no ent entity that can accommodate that to strengthen and uh, provide legitimacy of, of social enterprise as, as, um, as an organization meeting this um, the, the in social purpose. So um, uh, while several commercial organization have participated in SE sector as part of their corporate social responsibility practices, this need to be extended to involve social enterprises as part of their procurement policies uh, or broader supply chains. I know, uh, for example, that Christchurch City Council has started doing this um, recently. Um, uh, the Tokyo Olympic Games um, next year, for example, made a specific pledge to involve SE in the production and sales of um, services um, at this global um, event. So it's crucial to use um, uh, 
New Zealand um, education sector to mainstream this SE. Remember that um, uh, I mentioned earlier, Oxford University, Hartford, started mainstreaming this into the teaching um, uh, 20 years ago. And, and uh, New Zealand need to uh, catch up with this. I know high schools are doing this uh, entrepreneurial um, activities and we need to, to mainstream this into the education curriculum because it is, it is a, a, um, an important part of, of the social and economic well-being of, of our of our country. So the UNA Center at Lincoln is working towards this, um, providing this educational service um, in this regard. The, the key challenge is to collaborate with other stakeholders, the investors, the incubators, and um, with Lincoln as a hub to provide that enabling environment through research, through giving evidence and, and um, sort of uh, uh, share the, uh, the, the knowledge with the, the wider uh, public. So yes, our mandate is to, to teach and research, but I passionately feel that community services for, for students who are doing commerce degrees, who are doing agricultural technology, environmental management, there's a huge scope for, for young people to be inspired and to get a hands-on, to meet with mentors and to talk about uh, their idea from their great idea to actually, how do, you, how do I make it bankable to be um, a, a, an activity that, that create that, that, that impact? So, so many opportunities to integrate SE into the bioeconomy of New Zealand primary industry, for example. I recently supervised a, a master's student who are looking at the agribusiness, um, uh, the uh, adding value to the agri agribusiness um, uh, value chains through uh, working with smallholders, uh, working through uh, big companies, and just create this 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 link to make the those future cycles happen more often, faster, and wider. Mm. <laughs> That's Thank my dream. you, Annie. I I think your inspiration and motivation will have some exciting news for us in the in the future from the Lincoln University's um, you know Center of Social Business. And I really appreciate your time and the and the uh, and the sharing of insights about this special sector that very few people actually talk about. And, and you're right that we need to start making this a bit more mainstream by talking through, um, you know, educating ourselves about it. So thank you very much, Ani, once again. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absa. If you wish to connect with Ani uh, and read about her research, uh, the detail, her, these details are available on Lincoln University's website under staff profile. So you can find her profile there and read through her research. As for me, I will be back with more faculty insights uh, from the experts that we have. Thank you very much for joining us and we look forward to having you to connecting back with you. So if you have any feedback, feel free to send me an email at hafsa.emad at lincoln.ac.nz or you can message me on LinkedIn. Kakite no, goodbye and see you all again.